All right, this is going to be a quick review on counting elements and counting atoms or analyzing a chemical formula. Um, first thing to remember is the letters here represent what? The letters represent the elements. elements on the periodic table. So don't forget that. All your letters are always going to be the elements. So if it asks you specifically to look for elements in a chemical formula or equation, you're looking for those letters. The atoms of each of those elements are represented by whatever number, or if you only have one, then you only have one. But whatever coefficient or subscripts that are shown, that tells us how many of each element are present. Let's look at this big number for starters. This is our coefficient. The coefficient is going to tell me how many molecules or how many of this stuff I've got. It says I've got five of all of that. Okay. A subscript, if you remember, the subscript was actually the little letter excuse me, the little number that goes with the element in front of it. So it tells me this subscript 2 here tells me only about how many chlorine atoms I have and this one tells me only how many oxygen atoms I have. So here we go. Let's see if we can figure out how many of uh, each of these elements we do have, how many atoms of each. Remember, we're heading towards balancing equations or looking or recognizing if an equation is balanced. And so you have to be able to look at both sides of an equation, and we're looking at uh, compounds just like this, and we have to analyze them to check the equation. So this is a real important step in our learning. All right, so let's see what elements are present. We have CA. We have CL. Remember, that is L represents still one element, and we have O for oxygen. So if we look at this, we only have one CA here, but the coefficient tells us we have five times whatever's in there. So we're really going to have to multiply the coefficient by everything within the compound. So, okay, so if we only had one calcium, now we have five times that one, so that means we have five. We had two chlorine, now we have five times that two chlorine, that means we have ten. And we had two atoms of oxygen, now we have five times those two, meaning we also have ten atoms of oxygen. All right, very good job. Let's try the next one, it's a little trickier. So we have a coefficient of three, in other words, we have three HC2H3O2. Now notice in this formula we have H listed twice in the formula, but that is actually due, due to the way the molecules are arranged. So we're not going to count it or list it twice because hydrogen or H is still H. So when we list our elements, we're going to list hydrogen, right? We got rid of those then. C for carbon and O for oxygen. All right, so we have how many hydrogen exactly do we have? Well, we had one initially times the three. That means we're going to have three total. How many carbon do we have? Well, we had two initially times our three. That means we're going to have six total. And oxygen. Initially, we had two times our three. That gives us six total. So this is what you should not have. I did it wrong forgot to count this one. So wait up. So here we have three initially. So we forgot our a second hydrogen here. So we have three, but times the three gives us nine. So we're going to have three plus the nine, right? So we're going to have a total hydrogen of 12. Now that looks better. Awesome. All right, let's try one more. I'd like to try this one down here. Here we have a 
subscript outside the parentheses, you know, from math. Anytime you see parentheses, you need to do this first, mathematically speaking. So we're going to get rid of these parentheses first. This essentially tells us that we're going to have three times this. Even though it's a subscript, it applies to both the O and the H within the parentheses. So let's get rid of it. And then we have 4AG. If we distribute our 3, that means we have O3H3. So now we can just move on. Uh, we now know we have 4AG O3H3, right? 4 times this whole thing. So we're going to list our elements. And then we are going to count the atoms of each element. So silver, AG. 4 times the 1 gives us 4. Oxygen, we have 3. 4 times that 3 gives us 12. And hydrogen, we have 3. 4 times that 3 gives us 12. That should be what this looks like. All right, real quick before we move on, um, let's look, look at what this looks like when we're looking at a balancing a chemical equation or recognizing if it's balanced or not. Let's say, for example, you have a coefficient here of 3 and a coefficient here of 2. So in this example, um, a t-chart, I'm making my t-chart, but the elements have already been listed for me. So I'm just going to count up how many atoms of each element there are in this example. Note how they have listed the mg the same across each side of the equation. Remember, this is kind of where your t-chart starts when, so we can check and make sure this side is equal to this side. Remember, in an equation, both sides have to be equal. And the yield side sign or make separates the both sides of our chemical equation. So this must be equal to this if it's going to represent reality or a chemical reaction. So here, remember, our coefficient tells us how many of these we have. When you see a sign, the coefficient does not apply to that whatever follows that sign. It only goes with it, whatever element or molecule or compound is directly behind it. So it tells us we have 3mg plus we have how many O's? We have 2. And this on the reactant side of the equation. Now let's look on the product side of the equation. So we have two magnesium and two oxygen. Now with them listing the elements for me on either side of the equation in order, I can quickly look across the whole equation to see are these numbers equal. They have to be equal on all counts. They're equal here, but here they are not equal, meaning that at this point, once I find that one element is not the same on either side of the equation, then it is not balanced.